Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May 2018 2- 1v1 tournament for Zero K. I am your host, Dominic, along with Hokomoko. And hey. we're starting out here with a single elimination tournament with already 16 signups. Actually, that's pretty good, considering this is a 1v1 tournament. It's not like last time where it was 1v1 with a bunch of different groups. This is a single group, so everyone here is going to be fighting each other. Still have 16 signups, so there's still really, still people really want to play, despite the fact that they know they're going to be up against Randy and Golda and Drone. Basically, and... because of the Steam release, we got lots of players returning and lots of new players, and, and the 1v1 scene is basically flourishing. It is very much fun in Zero K. Exactly. So we are going to be starting out with a match between 400 and Harvey, and that is going to be on, I believe it is... Was it Zero? Titan no, Duel. It? Titan Duel. Thank you. Yeah, 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 Titan Duel. I've been... I've been quite a fan of this map, actually. It's... For the vehicle maps, it is my favorite. And I don't really like vehicle maps as a rule. They're, they're the kind of maps I look at and go, do I have to? Really? Unlike the Comet maps, you have many, many terrain features here. All the little holes and, and blocking on the sides. And you even have these weird hills on the border. Exactly. It's It really doesn't even feel entirely like a vehicle map as a result. We're seeing already Harvey going for the Cloaky Bots. As is 400, both of them proving my point that while this map is flat and big, it can support a fairly wide variety of factories. Um, we see, oh, a very early imp from 400. Yeah, well, I mean, that is actually, I think, probably assuming their opponents are going for the vehicles. Imp Glaive is a pretty, or, yeah, it's, Imp Glaive is a really good setup to have if your opponent goes for some early Scorchers, or especially if they go early tanks, which a lot of people do on this map, because tanks are quite powerful. Coming with a few early Kodachis, getting stunned out by an Imp is a great way to stop an early harassment and basically pay for itself, because the Imp, it's 120 compared to the Kodachi's 180. It's more than worth it. However, that is not the case. Harvey also going for Cloaky Bots. Neither player is going to be really needing those Imps at the moment, but man, if 400 can hold on to that until the mid-game, when we start getting into like, Ronin Balls, that Imp could very well win them the game. So now we're going to see some raiding game, and basically it's going to decide who's going to get more metal, and the more metal wins the game. Naturally. At this point, Harvey is doing a great job just applying pressure. 400 has been pushing out a little bit more conservatively. They are expanding a touch slower than for Harvey. However, they are also not losing much of anything yet. That being said, if Harvey were to go in with a handful of glaives, like half dozen glaives, which they do have, they would be able to get through basically everything. Granted, there is that imp there. I mean, 400 does have defensive options. They have the imp, they have the reavers. They're fully set up to defend, but it's clear that 400 is playing a bit of a longer game. They're probably not going to get a strong economy right off the bat. They've started out reasonably well, but the problem, of course, is that Harvey can just explode. Once they get two or three conjur or well, yeah, conjurers, once they get two or three conjurers, it is going to be a very quick and very decisive map control game where Harvey will have the advantage. Oh, very nice glaive um, passing the river. Just... Ooh, tricky. Did they... I think they known that was there. Yeah, they knew that was there. Just... Saw it, went past it, nicely and done. Ooh, day. there it is! But nothing to follow up. Those glaives are perfectly fine. And the glaive in the bottom, Harvey was able to take care of 400s. This is not going to last long, mind you, but still. The glaives at the top do manage to get the follow-up. I mean, 400 just calmly moving their glaive in there. And hey, I'll, I'll take it. That imp got value. And dealing with, like, 195 metal worth of glaives for the cost of 120 metal worth of imp. That's a good trade. That is a worthwhile trade. So 400 it's right not now. Just any, yeah, sorry. So 400 right now is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, you go. <laughs> okay, 400 right now is in a great position to push out as they are doing. Like they basically their defensive play has paid off, and now they're flipping into offense, and that's exactly how I expect you to do this. Basically, Harvey had a ratio of 10 glaives to one conjurer in the beginning, and it should have been used to, you know, like because of the pressure, it should have. Um, expanded naked expand even because mm. 400 didn't trade but it didn't happen so so i think the early pressure didn't pay off and that's a really good point because that those glaives there they're great for how we'll see now like harvey's gonna have an easy time pushing 400 away it's not like harvey didn't have a way of defending but the thing is because harvey did get rid of the pressure or did try to go in they went a bit too greedy now 400 can expand at the same time, so both players are pretty much going to be on par economically. And Harvey is still going to have a slight advantage, but it's nowhere near as strong as you said, Hokomoko, had they naked expanded and ended up with like 30 metal per second by now. As opposed to 20. 
Which is not, it's not bad, but still, I mean, they could have been really rich. At least uh, energy-wise, both sides are doing nicely. Um, yeah, that's not really a major problem. Solars. Yeah. Well, sprinkled around, trying to make sure the overdrive is re relatively efficient. That's what Harvey's doing. 400, on the other hand, is much more centralized. I mean, they're focusing much more on using the solars as part of their defensive strategy rather than using them as their main source of overdrive power just by having them spread around all the metal extractors. I kind of like the way that Harvey's doing it. Actually, I do like the way that Harvey has set up. They actually have also set up their solar plants for a similar purpose. And now with the Reaver coming in here, that that shows. I mean, that metal extractor was n under no threat whatsoever. The Reaver could not have switched off to it without getting past the commander. So that's the thing. Harvey's positioning on their buildings is actually really smart. And now, whether or not that comes in handy in the future is going to remain to be seen, because it all comes down to whether or not the solar plants go down. But at this point, with 400 coming in here, they will be able to get rid of the Ronin and most of the Glaives. There's not a whole lot here that Harvey has to defend this with. And Harvey, on the other hand, they do just happen to have not enough in front for 400 to actually harass. That is the one downside here. 400, on the other hand, they have actually expanded quite a bit. If Harvey turns this into a counterattack, they could take out quite a bit of this top section here. Or actually, even better. It looks like they didn't come in on the bottom. They get in, there's a metal extractor here. And then through the entire north side of 400's base, there's basically nothing defending it. A couple lotuses is not going to work against eight glaives. And Harvey is now sending his conjurer to get all the reclaim. There's like nine glaives in metal Yay! on the ground. <laughs> I, my last commentated match, my last exhibition match, there was a bunch of reclaim. It was a 3v3. It was... I was pointing out several times, like, there's Reclaim! There's 2,000 metal worth of Reclaim! Get the Reclaim! And Harvey's getting the Reclaim! Thank you, Harvey! Make my day! <laughs> Definitely, Harvey is a long-time player. He may be a bit rustier, maybe not entirely with the meta, but he knows Reclaim. Oh yeah, as long as you have Reclaim, you have the economy, you have quite a bit of an advantage you can get from that. And at this point, ooh, that... Oh, did you see the way that Solar Plant's being used to block off the Reavers? The Glaives just... Just completely easing around that. A couple of them do die, but two of them do manage to get in. Unfortunately, they will go up against this Lotus, and two Glaives will not take out a Lotus. They might be able to take out the Metal Extractor in the meantime, so at least that'd be something. But that's still... Still, actually, three Metal Extractors at the cost of a handful of Glaives. Not a bad raid overall. However, more importantly, Harvey doesn't really lose a lot of the pressure game. They still have enough Glaives at home that they can hold off against any counterattack 400 tries to pull right now. And 400 is trying to pull a couple of counterattacks with the Reavers... But there's more than enough forces to stop that. Harvey is prepared. And something that will actually make you more happy, 400 is already remaxing. All so good. Actually, I was noticing that they were remaxing immediately, and that's I harp on that every single time. Remaxing is how you win these games. Reclaim and remax. Never let your economy go, go to waste. Never let your metal extractor stay idle. I occasionally struggle with this myself, but it is absolutely key, because if you keep getting those metal extractors back, you basically won't have too much downtime, and you'll keep your metal income up, and then you'll build stuff and you win. So, yeah, that's really handy. I wonder who's going to um, escalate first. At the moment, no one has built anything bigger than the Reaver. And the biggest thing is the Stinger that 400 now did, but that doesn't count. Well, 400 has 35 metal per second. They have a decent amount of metal if they want to go for a factory switch. They're on the cusp of striders being useful. I think their main their main concern though is that right now Harvey does have a bit of a stronger, more varied con or more varied army. At this point, 400 has a, mostly Ronin and a few Glaives, and Harvey kind of has an army to counter that. They have enough Reavers to stop the Glaives from doing much to their own Ronin, and enough Glaives that there's not much 400's Ronin can do. So right now Harvey will win any straight up engagement. Like, barring terrain. That, that is a way that 400 could manage to win this back. But just straightforward, army on army, Harvey is in the lead right now. Not to mention the raids coming in here as well. Harvey, man, you are just keep keeping this complete. You're keeping 400 so much on their toes. It's great. But anyway, 400, I they might escalate just to try to even out this entire army advantage simply because, again, they have more money. It's just a matter of whether or not they spend it and how they spend it. Also, 400 is accessing. Because of East Rolling. True. Yeah, we're talking about the energy before, and that is currently being a bit of a problem. Mostly accessing off of Reclaim, too, which is a bit of a shame. I'd love to see them just switch off, get a couple more solar plants, and then go back to Reclaim. Because that's always the hardest thing. They have the metal, they have the production capacity. They have 40 metal per second going in their factory. It's just energy. But at this point, though, the front lines, we are getting a bit of a fight coming in here. Harvey trying to find room to get in to get around the Reavers with the Glaives. But mostly it's just 400 applying pressure. 
Harvey forced back, and that will mean that 400 will have a touch more room to have a bit more of a secure bottom expansion, while Harvey, on the other hand, is still struggling to secure basically anything outside of their corner of the map. Well, they are doing a fine job with that backyard harassment. At the very least, that is something going in their favor. And the escalation has arrived from north, where Harvey has started making ah, gunships. gunships. Blasters coming in here. Oh, that is that is not a bad choice. I mean, like I said, Harvey could win a straight up fight, but why not just throw in a blast wing and burn everything down in the front lines? Maybe go in the back lines and burn stuff down there too, because oh, I missed it too. All the caretakers went down. That glaive from Harvey able to get rid of all of the production capacity from 400. They are now running excess, no matter how much power they have, without rebuilding those caretakers. Nicely done. That's I always say, if you want to get some damage in the back lines, go for the caretakers, and that is exactly what Harvey did. And to great effect, too. Now 400 is having quite a lot of pressure on them. Harvey knows there's not much that can be done here. 400 does have the Ronin. Obviously, they do have that. The Reavers can't really come in, but the Ronin are doing fine. 400's commander on the front lines, forced to retreat, and not able to build up any more pickets in the front line, meaning that there's nothing to stop Harvey from just pushing in in terms of attack defenses. And really, the army value is just completely in favor of Harvey. It's just a matter of whether or not 400 can get the production back, but again, their production coming online is going to take a while. Harvey was doing this extremely well. They knew that once they hit that, once they hit the caretakers, 400 could not rebuild in time. Although Harvey is just out echoed, just like it hasn't expanded well enough. That's um, fair. Yeah, that's actually something that will be a problem. Once the caretakers get back up, Harvey's going to have a tough time staying in this game. They basically have about two minutes, I'd say, to push themselves into a winning position. I mean, they're managing in the south, though. Got the few glaives, but it's not much. Yeah, I'm thinking if 400 can hold this, out for about two minutes, two, three minutes, they are going to win this. This doesn't bode well for Harvey, I think. It is mostly decided. Well, Harvey, on the other hand, is making sure to make use of some reclaim as best they can. It's hard, but their commander is up front as well, taking advantage of that, making sure that the, rock, the Ronin cannot completely destroy every part of the reclaim chain. However, these knights coming up here, I mean, 400 just emergency built these knights at the very end of their last set of caretakers. It paid off, though. I mean, at this point, there's not much that Harvey can really do in the top of, of the map, and they basically can't really expand in the northeast. They do have the Nimbus coming around the side, though, and the Blast Wings are still available. They are still ready. Actually, we're already used here to help with the fight in the first place against 400. There's more of them available as well, and the Nimbus coming around the back. With no anti-air to deal with it, this still is going to be extremely effective. Getting rid of more characters, getting rid of more metal extractors, possibly more conjurers as well. Yeah. Harvey, I still think, is in a decent enough position raiding-wise, but they are relying entirely on their raiding to win. At the same time, though, it looks like it might be a bit of a problem. The Razor is up. So that Nimbus won't be able to just completely rip apart the caretakers without dying itself, which would be reclaim. And that'll be enough for really anyone to come back from. I mean, 400, if they don't lose that caretaker, they are still in this match pretty well. And the Nimbus cannot easily go for it. Garrett, go for the caretaker! Get it! One down! Maybe get the next two. They have death explosions, but no, it's not enough. Only got rid of one. 400 still has 30, 40 metal per second going into their factory. They did not lose any effective production capacity. No, uh, this is three sides. Yeah, it certainly does look pretty grim for 400. Or sorry, for Harvey coming in here. 400. I mean, they have the knights set up. They have most army value in the knights, actually, come to think of it. But it's just a question of whether or not they can push through with those knights because Harvey, Harvey is not that far behind. Like they do have, they have enough production going in their main base. They have a fair amount stored up. They have been reclaiming reasonably well as well. So it's not like 400 is completely out of it. It's just at this point, Harvey does. Sorry, Harvey's not out of it. At this point, Harvey just doesn't have as strong of an economy. So yes, in the long run, 400 will take this. But at the same time, 400 has now been forced to build a bunch of gremlins. Like a thousand metal worth of gremlins. That could have been a couple. That could have been three more knights. And we'll see how, whether or not that's actually relevant right now, though, as the knights are coming in and the glaives should be able to take care of them reasonably well, or at least cover for the. Ah, there we go. Covering for the Reavers and pushing back those knights. One of them, two of them going down essentially for free. And at the same time, again, those gremlins, they're doing some work, but ultimately Harvey can just go back to land forces and essentially make Har make 400 have completely wasted all their cash. The thing is that just the co containment is too strong. 
And that's true. There's only so much you can do without metal. Um, that is a fair point. I mean, I do like that these nemesis are coming around the sides and making life difficult for for 400. They're not ruining everything in 400 now. They do have ravens of their own, so they are going to be able to just tear out the nemesis no problem. And I think with those with those ravens, if nothing else, that is going to be the thing that seals the deal, unless 400 or unless Harvey rather catches on quickly, which they might because they do have the nemesis nearby. They might be able to spot it. I suspect but, that the ravens oh. are going to do a finish the game blow on the factory. Yeah, we have certain... What do we have now? Six? Ooh, yeah. We just need about... Actually, this is enough. Once the six I one's done, they could go to the exactly. factory. Yeah. We will save... Uh, I call it. Well, at this point, it is a little bit... No, they're being good safe. I think they're worried... I think 400 is worried that Harvey's going to have enough anti-air that would stop the factory destruction. Because right now, they're, that is enough. You're right. They could just send in each of those ravens. Because each raven deals 800 damage. So, factories only have 4,000 HP... Do the math. You really only need five, but just in case, get six or seven. Yeah. However, so, it, ooh, what are nine. they doing? Wow, yeah, just to be safe. Either that or trying to get both factories at once, but nine isn't quite enough for that. Factory or factory and commander. Everything that come. There are many options. There are, but it looks like they've been spotted, actually. Yeah, they've been spotted. It's totally known. And they're killing the Zeus's. I, not what I'd agree with, but yeah, that's going to open things up pretty heavily. Harvey now knows that there's an, there's air. They know to go for anti-air. Like, they're just going to build a couple razors, and that'll basically take care of it. So I don't I don't say that being hugely powerful. At the same time, Harvey has broken the contain. It's a really big deal. You are talking about the contain earlier, Hokomoko, and this is where it's going to be a bit of yeah. a problem, is that the contain has been broken. The entire eastern side of the map is essentially going to be torn to pieces. The Ravens are doing their job to an extent, but it's just not quite enough. At the same time, though, having seen those forces being pushed out, 400 going in for a counterattack, possible, well, base destruction, really. It's about to base trade, but no, it's not a trade. Harvey's getting thrown in the towel. Good job trying to break that contain, but unfortunately, that contain was stronger than just that one line of glaives and gremlins. So with that, Harvey throws in the towel, loses their commander, and should be eliminated from the tournament as soon as they actually hit the surrender button. But it looks like they're still trying to go, trying to see if they can do something. Is it a fake GG? Are they actually are they actually surrendering? Because I would expect they were, but they're also playing as if they're still in it. I mean, what they see is uh, the last uh, last stand. Call it? Last stand. Uh, something like this. Last stand. That's the that's the term. No, I was talking about the uh, convulsions. I think of a oh dying man. person. But yes, yes, uh, definitely. I don't know what that's called actually. I'm a something. Well, at any rate, that is game. Harvey fighting strong, actually doing pretty well for basically having a metal income disadvantage for the majority of the game. Their army value was nearly on par, if not ahead a lot of the time. Like A lot of smart play, a lot of really strong harassment going around in the middle of 400's base. Ultimately, just being the, undone by the lack of expansion. That was already also the, the army similarity was because uh, 400 invested a lot in, in uh, defenses. It is oh, how the yeah. containment was actually constructed. It's early Stinger and all these defenders that we've seen, which uh, Harvey kind of just tried to push straight on, which wasn't exactly working. No, that is a tricky bit, because that that part with the Stingers and everything, that was fairly vulnerable for a while. The Blastwings came in and did their job, but unfortunately Harvey couldn't continue pushing in. It was an even trade in that first fight. So that left 400 open to build up, because they had plenty of spare money to do so. And Metal wins battles once again. Yep. So, as that, I'm not sure what other games there are right now. I think... Let's see, what do we have in terms of the bracket? So, Kingsdown and Randy both advance. Drone advances. Gold advances. So, these two, whoever wins this will fight the winner of Shoxie and so much for subtlety, but I'm not sure who that is right now. So... Yeah, for now, it's going to take a short break to then move into the next game, whichever that is.